So now that we've registered our achievements, it's time to place them on our page. What we want is to put a list of the available achievements into our app. So let's take a look. So if you go to the achievements page in the developer website for Facebook, you'll see a lot of information about how to work with achievements. So we've already learned how to create achievements, first by creating the HTML necessary for Facebook to understand what they are. Then we learn how to register them. Now it's time to learn how to read achievements, which is in this section. Notice it says that you can get all achievements for an app by issuing an HTTP GET request to slash app ID slash achievements. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the Graph API Explorer, which normally shows you information about a user. And I'm going to switch right here to source foo, which is the application. And I will now need the application ID slash achievements. So I'm going to go to my apps page and do that by going to this link right here. And I'll copy the app ID. I'll switch over to the Graph API Explorer again. And I'll paste that. And I'll put in slash achievements. And remember, it said that it wanted a get request. You can also issue any other type of get, post, or delete request right there. And so I'm going to hit the Enter key. And now you can see a list of achievements in JSON format for my page. So this Graph API Explorer, it's quite useful for a lot of different things. And this is one of them. You can issue commands directly from here or you can read information that you want to preview for your app. This will tell you how to get to specific things. So I can see that registering my achievements worked because there's my newbie achievement. And next is my sharing achievement. And I can see the data for the Kung Fu achievement. Awesome. So this looks like it's ready to go. Let's switch over to BB Edit. I'll go ahead and minimize this. Here's my code snippets.txt file. I'm going to need to open the JavaScript file as well as the CSS document and the index file. So let me open those. Yeah, so obviously the first thing I need is to have a placeholder for my information. So I'll go to code snippets and get this placeholder set of divs right here. So it's going to have a div with an ID of achievements, and then it's going to have a section for app achievements. And later on, we'll have a section for user achievements. So I'm going to go over to my index file and I'll put it right in the social plugins. It's not technically a social plugins, but it doesn't really matter where these go. They could go outside the social plugins. So let me save that. All right, so next we need to get the app token. Now, if you watched the previous movie, you saw that we registered the app token by creating a document that allow you to register these. One of the things that we had to do was combine a little bit of PHP with JavaScript. And this is the function that does that. So I need to make sure that this is on an HTML page or a PHP page rather so that this executes before it gets sent back to the server. I want to put this right here before I call my script.js to make sure that this app token variable is created with the proper information. So I pasted that in there. All this does is goes to this URL and requests an app ID by feeding it the application ID and the application secret. Obviously, I need to get my app ID and my app secret. So let me go ahead and switch over. I'll get the app secret back to BB Edit. There's the app secret and back to Safari. Get the app key. I'll minimize this. Come over here, get the app ID. So we should be good to go. This should be fed into the app token variable before it calls the script. Save that. And next, of course, we need to add the script for getting the app achievements. So this is exactly what we were doing in the Graph API. We set a call to the Facebook API method with the app ID and the achievement, and it's a get method. And we also need to make sure that we feed it an app token, which we have just received by creating this right here. Then after that, it's going to receive a response from the server if it was successful. And that response is going to be fed into a variable. So that data will be fed into this app achievements variable. And what I'm doing right now is just outputting it to the console to make sure that it works just fine. So I'm going to grab this code. I'll go back into my JavaScript document. And I want to put this somewhere after it initializes things. So here's where it populates the stories. Here's where it finds out if a user is logged in. And right here, after I insert the welcome with the user's name, 
I'm going to paste that. So after it initializes, we verify that this is a user from Facebook and they're logged in. Then I'm going to call the Facebook API. I need to make sure I update this app ID. Should be somewhere in here. There it is up there. So I'll just copy it and paste it right there. I'll save this and let's switch back over to our app and I'll refresh. Okay, so we shouldn't really see anything, but we should be able to go to the console and take a look at the object that it received back. So I'm going to show Web Inspector here, and I'm going to go to the console. I don't see an error. So you can see that it actually received three objects. I must have another console output here, so I can delete that if I want to. But I see the three different objects right there, and if I open them up, I notice that this is an object, and the description is the, about the newbie achievement here. Here's the title. So here's all the data for the newbie achievement. I'll close this one out. Here must be the data for the next achievement, which is the sharing. And sure enough, there's all the data. And finally, the Kung Fu achievement. So all my information came in just fine. It's just a matter of accessing the data. So I know that I can, if I understand the JSON format, I can output whichever parts of these different objects I need. So I'll switch back over to BB Edit and go back to Code Snippets. And here I have a script, just a replacement script that gets the app achievement. So it's pretty much the same as this one up here. But after app achievements, I have this section right there and then I output everything. So this section right here creates a variable called output. It feeds it the label of that section, then a little bit of a description. And then here it goes through and gets the available achievements. So it's going to go, this is jQuery that goes through each one of the achievements and it generates output for each one of those. So I don't want to copy this entire thing and have to re-put the app ID. So I'll just copy this section, go back into my JavaScript, and in the place where I'm just outputting stuff to the console, I'll paste that. And let me indent it a little bit so it looks a little better. So this should output all of the achievements into the app achievements div that I created as a placeholder. So let's save that switch over to Safari. Let's close this out and refresh. Okay, so it looks like it is publishing the achievements. There's the achievements heading that I created. Here is the paragraph. And after that, it's printing out the available achievements. Here's the heading for that. Here's the achievements. Right now, the achievements are 200 by 200 pixels. But I can see that there's the newbie achievement with the description. There's the graphic for the sharing achievement. And finally, the comfort achievement. Obviously, this is really annoying that it's so large. So we need to fix that and we'll do that with CSS. So we'll get the last bit of code from the code snippets. And we have some styles here for the achievement. So I'll scroll all the way down, copy that, paste it at the very bottom of my CSS file, save that. Let me switch over and just show you how it looks. And then I'll go through and explain really quick how I did the CSS. Let's see, it's loading the achievements, and now they look really nice right next to each other. If you scroll over each of these achievements, you'll see that it has a little bit of a pop-up. I did that all with CSS. So let's take a look at the CSS and see how we achieved that. I'll see if I can open that and leave it to the side because it makes sense when we're looking at the code and what it's doing side by side. So achievements, the CSS starts right here. Just a little bit of padding to the bottom, so it has a little bit of room at the bottom. The headline level three is going to be formatted in this manner. Just a slight color here. Nothing, nothing major. So that's this available achievement, I believe. And then the H4s are going to be a little bit smaller. So the H4s will be these ones that pop up when I roll over these elements. Then we keep on going and we have a paragraph. This makes the paragraphs right here a little bit smaller. And the images sets the width of the images to 50 pixels. Remember that Facebook now requires 200 by 200 pixel images. I think it's because of the iPad's high resolution screen. So it just resizes it to be 50 pixels wide. Next, we go through and add some other styles for paragraphs. Let's see, articles. So each one of these, actually, so H3 and H4 are the achievements for here. And then later on, when I do user achievements, you'll actually see an H4. And inside the articles for the achievements, you'll see an H3, which is actually what happens when I roll over. Paragraph is right underneath that. And then the trick that I do to pop them over is right here within these two styles. So I set up the article itself. So each one of these groups of data has an article div. So I set the position of that to relative. 
that allows me to then set the text inside them to be position absolute. So the text will be position relative to the last relative container, which is its parent, which is this article thing right here. And because it's absolutely positioned, then I can say, okay, how far away from the original element do I want to position the rollover text? And that's going to be position 80 pixels to the right, minus 20 pixels from the top. And the width of that group of text is going to be 200. So that's what you see when you roll over like this. The text is aligned to the right, as you can see. Opacity 90%, so it shows a little bit of the background through. And the Z index 100, so that it stays on top of everything else. And of course, this is not displaying when you see the screen first, but it will display whenever you roll over. That's what this part of it does. It says when I roll over each article, which is each one of these elements, then the text element will display as block, which means it's just visible like that. So pretty cool. I think you're getting the hang of how to access different parts of the Facebook API first by previewing them through the Graph API Explorer, but then by just calling different things with the JavaScript SDK and accessing anything you want from Facebook's Open Graph.